given a 5% year-on-year decrease in COGS and an increase in leverage from 1.4x to 2.8x, we think we can increase free cash flow by 67% and increase our underlying IRR by 14%. Given a 5% uh, decrease in COGS year on year and an increase in the leverage from 1.4x to 2.8x, we believe we can increase the FCF by 67% and also increase the underlying IRR by 14%. I'm here to talk to you guys about disruptive innovation, a real paradigm shift in solo mo. We are zenuber.io and we're here to change the world. I'm here to talk to you about disruptive innovation uh, about Solomo. We are zenuber.io and we are here to change the world. I'm here to talk to you about disruptive innovation, about a paradigm shift in Solomo. We are zenuber.io and we're going to change the world. As you ascend from the seafloor, it's very critical for you to be neutrally buoyant. As you ascend from the sea floor, it's very critical for you to be neutrally buoyant. As you begin your ascent from the sea floor, it's critical that you become neutrally buoyant. Now, I don't know about you, but you've just heard three of us say the same thing three different times. And yet I'm guessing if you looked around the room or if I polled you, the credibility of each of the speakers may have differed. For example, startup bro talking about the private equity model, unlikely to be worth much. Ryan talking about disruptive innovation, slightly more skeptical as well. And the gal in the suit telling you what you should be doing when you're diving to the ocean, again, not a source of credibility. We spend a lot of time in this class talking about how my vocal tone or how my physical gestures make a difference in our presentation, how they affect how you react, how they affect what you learn, how they affect what you pay attention to. What we haven't spent as much time, though Karina tried to in the last presentation, is talking about attire and its effect on us. And the way you see it, attire has three main issues. One, unlike most Mark Twain quotes, ours is real and not just a product of the internet. But broadly, attire talks about every interaction that we have. From the broad cultural thing, be aware of where you are and who you're speaking to. The specific audience you're dealing with, whether it's an interaction or a meeting. But more importantly, the effect that you can have on yourself. As different cultures and different societies have several essential nuances about their culture. For example, in the Western culture, it is encouraged to wear red as a power statement. On the other hand, you do not want to wear red to an Indian wedding. However attractive you may appear, you do not want to steal the show from the bride because red is strictly the color of the bride in the Indian wedding. Speaking about color, let's look at some of the strong personalities in this world have influenced, how they have influenced the societies and the regions, right? This is Margaret Thatcher, and there's a lot of thought that has gone in the selection of the power blue suit that she wears. Blue is a universally accepted color. Blue is a color that avoids evil in Greeks. And blue is also the color of Lord Krishna for Hinduism. Blue represents holiness for Jewish. As you can see, there's a lot of thought that has gone into this understanding of the cultural biases in making this decision. Further, let's kind of drill down from societies and countries to communities and industries and see what attire means. As many of you may recognize this guy, he is Paul Graham, who is the co-founder of Y Combinator. As you can see, he's speaking to a bunch of startup guys. Many of you could easily guess what startup guys wear. They're so busy with their, uh, starting their businesses, they have no time to shop, they absolutely don't care about brands. And rightfully here, Paul Graham is talking to them in the appropriate attire to inspire them and to actually send his personal message of what matters to him. Now, trying to connect to the community, I would also want to give you a word of caution, right? For example, just because you're talking to a bunch of teenage skateboarders, you do not want to appear in the teenage clothes. 
<laughs> unless you are someone like Rodney Mullen, who is actually the greatest street uh, skateboarder in the world. <laughs> and thus, it's essential to be authentic also in terms of what you are as you per bring your perception to the audience. And if you are authentic, you can not only build your brand, there's a lot more you can do as you are authentic. Steve Jobs, with his <laughs> simplistic dressing, he not, he not only made a statement of him being an unconventional CEO, he actually set up the culture of what Apple is to be. How many of you remember what Apple was before 1998? Look at all his keynotes from 1998 all the way to 2010. Mm -hmm. It's the same pair of denim jeans, it's the same black turtleneck, and also the same pair of sneakers. He surely wanted to create a culture for simplicity and also being unconventional. That said, let's look at what you want to create an impact on, whether it be industry or was it just a bunch of people like you in the room. Let's talk about what's the impact we want to create with Attire on others. So we spent some time talking about culture and its effect on people. But there's also effect on the specific audience you deal with. For example, this is a fact. You know this, I know this, and the scientific research backs you up. Alice and Nova Burke, for example. <laughs> a study in the UK found that 45% of people think that someone wearing glasses appears more intelligent. A study in Switzerland found that even when you're dealing with random strangers, if they are wearing glasses, you think they are smarter with no other evidence to the contrary. For those of you who are looking at some point in your careers to run into trouble with the law, and I'm looking at some of the private equity kids here, one of the really interesting findings of the American Journal of Forensic Psychology is that defendants who wear glasses are less likely to be found guilty than those who don't. More importantly, these same defendants are perceived by juries who again have listened to them lie and steal for God knows how long to be significantly smarter and more trustworthy. Is there any rational basis to this? Absolutely not. Am I going to wear these in the presentation? Absolutely. <laughs> Aside from that, though, there are downsides as well. Everyone's seen the Hollywood version where you know, Anne Hathaway clearly is a giant nerd when she has glasses and suddenly is a shining princess without it. But women in particular, as again, Karina talked about earlier, had different issues with attire. I'm guessing every woman here knows that she is judged more harshly for her attire than men are. What is interesting, and perhaps sad, is that women are judged more harshly on their attire by other women. A study, again in the UK, pointed out, had 129 women look at a panel of images. These images varied on two dimensions. One, some of the women were labeled as high status, aka managers, and the other women were labeled as receptionists. The second dimension is some of the high status and some of the low status women had clothes that were described as slightly more provocative. Provocative here meaning a skirt that was half an inch shorter than the other half. What do you think we found? For the receptionist, no difference. Their competence was just the same whether they were wearing a slightly shorter skirt or not. For the high status women though, they were judged supremely harshly to the extent that their skirt was shorter. Is there any basis for this? Absolutely not. Is this fair? Definitively not. Does it mean you shouldn't pay attention to it? No way, you absolutely should. But this isn't limited to that. Both of them are actors. Both of them play doctors. And yet if you looked at America and polled them on who was more competent, the guy on the left would definitively win. A University of Michigan meta study found that in 21 of 30 studies, doctors wearing white lab coats meant that patients thought they were A, more competent, B, more trustworthy, and C, more likely to provide them with better healthcare going forward. Once again, the point here isn't about the facts underlying it, but in the world of evidence-based medicine, the extent that the patient feels better about themselves is a big deal. So the actual takeaway from this study was that they told doctors to put on white lab coats, whether they had them or not, just because patients felt better about them. But we've talked about culture and we've talked about others. The really fascinating impact with the stuff is what your clothing can do for you. So I want to talk to you about the impact your clothing can have on your self-perception and self-confidence. 
So many of you recognize this man, uh, but I want to remain culturally sensitive for those of you who didn't grow up in the United States. His name is Mr. Rogers. Now, Mr. Rogers used to be the host of a children's television show. And he would start every show by walking into his house, changing his sweater, sitting down, taking off his loafers, and putting on some sneakers that were essentially what he liked to wear in his house. And what he was doing was changing his clothing from what he felt comfortable in in the outside world to what he felt comfortable in in his house. Sorry. Um, and it's, it's kind of logical. Solomon and Douglas did a study where they, they found that when your clothing, your attire matches your situation, there are positive psychological consequences. Many of you thought I flubbed there. That was intentional. <laughs> but uh, as Adek was uh, mentioning about the perception of that people have about glasses, it's internal as well. So a study was done where there, essentially two groups were broken apart. One of those groups was given glasses and they were asked to take an IQ test. The group that was given glasses rated their performance more highly, a sign of self-confidence, despite the fact that they didn't actually perform better. But there are other studies which actually show there is an increase in performance when you do dress, um, kind of dress up there's an interesting nuance to this, though. So when you're wearing, as a, gener a generality, when you're wearing business formal attire, you feel more trustworthy, you feel more competent, and you feel more authoritative. When you're wearing casual clothing, you feel friendlier, you feel more creative, but you may feel less productive. And when your preference matches what you're wearing, those attributes are amplified. So, for example, let's say I'm a finance guy and I need to go present at a startup. I'm probably not going to go out of hoodie style because I'm not going to be in my comfort zone. What I probably want to hit is that business casual zone where I'm, very, I'm, I'm more aligned with my level of comfort in terms of the attire I prefer to wear, but I'm not alienating myself from my audience. So in terms of choosing the attire that is most appropriate for your presentation, we ask that you follow the reverse pyramid method. You start out widely with the culture that you're presenting to. You narrow down to the, your direct audience, those others you're going to be interfacing with, and then look at yourself. What are you most comfortable with?